Hi everyone, this is Yashpal here, and you are listening to audiobook summaries with me. And today's the audiobook summary is a fable about following your dreams. This is a audiobook summary of Alchemist. For the audiobook summaries on different topics by different writers, writers in both Hindi and English, you can check out in my playlist. That is the audiobook summaries in Hindi with Yash and audiobook summaries in English with Yash. This is how you can check out in the playlist. And you also, you can also join and subscribe the channel to stay connected with me to learn more things so that we can grow with a new richer experience of life. So let's, before we begin with, let's have a little bit talk about the book that, I'm, that is I'm going to record, that is I'm going to narrate by you should read this book. The Alchemist is a story of a boy named Santiago. Santiago who wants to achieve his personal legend. He travels too far away places and meets different kinds of people. In the end, Santiago realizes that the treasure he's been looking is right in his home. If you have a lifelong dream, this book is for you. You will learn many lessons which will help you in your journey. Now the question arises in mind, who should listen to this book? People of all ages, all occupations, students, teachers, parents, employees and the persons who got retired and the persons who want to achieve great feats in their life. Let's have a little bit talk about the author of the book. The author that is Paolo, Paolo Coelho is an international best-selling author. He has been writing novels for four decades. His stories are full of insights, inspiration and memorable characters. So let's begin with part one. This is the story of a shepherd boy named Santiago. He moved around the area of Andalusia, Spain, rearing his sheep. On one of his stops, he met and became endowed. On one of his stops, he met and became enamored of the raven hired daughter of a shopkeeper who used to buy wool from him. He was looking forward to seeing her again this year on his trip back to her area. He used to wander the hinterland of Spain with his flock of sheep. They trusted him to take them to food and water. He would keep a jacket handy for the cold nights, but did not like carrying it during the heat of the day. But one day, but one must be ready for change. Be it a day or night or the larger changes of life, he would tell himself. His family had wanted him to become a priest, but he wanted to travel and choose to become a shepherd so he could wander with his flock of sheep. He had had twice a particular dream while he was resting inside a church at night. In the dream, the sacristy was broken and a sycamore tree had grown there. He went to the town of Trifa to meet a mystic woman who could interpret dreams. The gypsy woman explained her interpretation 
of the dream to Santiago and told him that he had to go to the pyramid pyramids in Egypt where he shall find a treasure when he found it he was to pay gypsy woman one tenth of the treasure as a finder fee the boy did not think much of the interpretation and bent about his business in the city he was then approached by a by an old man who struck up a conversation with him though santiago santiago was not very interested the old man managed to engage his undivided attention with this with his wisdom the old man introduced himself as the king of salem and helped santiago focus on his destiny which was to find the foretold treasure he explained to the young man young shepherd that he usually comes along in some form or manner to help push people towards their destiny santiago santiago was about to give up so the king of the salem had to come to him and put him back on the right path the, he told the boy that life always gives clues and signs to a person to help decide their direction of follow uh, their direction of follow he asked the young man to pay him with a tenth of his flock for the next lesson the following day santiago arrived at the appointed time and was given two stones one white and one black the old man explained it was so that he could make a decision if ever he was confused during his quest santiago was also advised to watch out for omens that would give that would guide him to his destiny just then a butterfly flew in front of santiago's face which was a good omen the young man had reached tangier africa and was sitting at a bar when he was approached by another young man he spoke to him in spanish about what santiago wanted to do in this new land this was a omen santiago told the man that he wanted to go to the pyramids and could pay him for being his guide the man took his money and vanished into the busy market leaving santiago with nothing santiago was very sad but remembered the two stones he took them out and remember the encouraging words of the old man when you really want something very badly the entire universe conspired to help you achieve it the stones helped him he realized that the stones helped him realize that the old man was still with him in spirit and this gave him the strength to keep searching for the treasure despite losing his money santiago survived using he using the instincts he had learned as a shepherd and this increased his self confidence he chanced upon a crystal seller and offered his service in exchange for food he ended up cleaning the glassware and was taken for lunch by the shopkeeper while he was cleaning the glassware two customers purchased from the shop this was a good omen for the shopkeeper as he too believed in omens he decided to continue to employ santiago but santiago wanted to wanted money to go to the pyramids the shopkeeper laughed at him and said it would take too much money as the pyramids were thousands of kilometers away this talked santiago this stalled santiago and he agreed to work for enough money to buy more sheep so he could return where he had been born part 2 the boy wanted to make a new cabinet for displaying the crystals 
hoping to earn more money and return to his former life as a shepherd. The shopkeeper obliged as he wanted Santiago to achieve his dream. The shopkeeper himself dreamed of going to Mecca and had not been able to do so. He felt he should help Santiago fulfill his dream. Santiago advised the shopkeeper to start selling tea in crystal glasses to attract more customers. Though the shop was doing well, though the shop was doing well, and he didn't really want to add more work to expand, the shopkeeper agreed, attributing the decision to destiny. This choice changed everything. The shop, the shop became famous and a huge commercial success. After a earning money for his sheep, Santiago wanted to leave and he sought the shopkeeper's blessings. The business, the blessings were given, but he predicted that Santiago would not be going back to Spain. Santiago went about collecting his belongings. With them, he once again put the king's two stone in his pocket. Just he was about to leave for Andalusia, he began thinking about the experience he had, just been through, just as he was about to leave for Andalusia, he began thinking about the experiences he had just been through. He realized that he could always go back to rearing sheep, but he would never be able to travel to the pyramids again. The two stones in his pocket had once again been instrumental in changing his mind. Santiago continued his journey towards the pyramids. He reached a warehouse where he met an English man, a, an Englishman who identified with the shepherd in many ways. He also recognized the two stones that Santiago carried. This was an omen for Santiago. The two of them joined a caravan commanded by a bearded man which was to take them to Egypt. The caravan, the caravan or caravan, you may call it caravan or caravan, started its journey through the desert initially. The caravan started its journey through the desert. Initially, initially, there was a lot of commotion, but very soon everyone settled into a rhythm. The silence reigned. During the journey, Santiago wandered with his camel's driver and they exchanged stories about their lives. Both of them realized a philosophical truth. It seemed that everything in life was preordained, means predestined, because of the ease with which life's events would lead so seamlessly to the next. Their journey was often aided by the appearance of Bedouins, the mysterious protector tribe of the deserts. They would rely information, they would relay information about bandits and wars to the caravan and then disappear. Once they got news of a possible tribal war. This worried them. But turning around was not an option. And when turning back is not an option, then moving forward in the more prudent way is the only concern left to be addressed. Remember this statement again. Once The statement is about when turning back is not an option, then moving forward is the more prudent way, is the only concern left to be addressed. As they moved forward in their journey, the Englishman became more interested in the desert and Santiago became more interested in the English, Englishman's books. A sort of role reversal took place. The Englishman was interested in the art of alchemy, of making any metal turn into gold. 
बट द मोर सेंटियागो रीड द बुक्स द मोर ही वॉज कन्फ्यूज द लैंग्वेज एंड सिम्बल्स फॉर वी आंड हीस एबिलिटीज ही वॉन्ट टू टू नो हाउ एलकेमी कुड एग्जिस्ट बट वॉज टोल्ड बाई द इंग्लिश मैन दैट हायर नॉलेज कम्स टू ओनली दोस पुट इन द एक्स्ट्रा टाइम स्टडिंग द सब्जेक्ट एंड देन बाई बिकमिंग द सब्जेक्ट रिमेंबर दिस स्टेटमेंट अगेन दैट हायर नॉलेज कम्स टू ओनली दोस पुट इन द एक्स्ट्रा टाइम स्टडिंग द सब्जेक्ट एंड देन बाई बिकमिंग द सब्जेक्ट विद दिस आई एम साइनिंग ऑफ विथ पार्ट फर्स्ट एंड यू कैन कंटिन्यू विद द पार्ट सेकेंड इन अनदर वीडियो दैट इज द पार्ट सेकेंड थैंक्स